need to talk to uh, Diego Parker. He's the pro. Well, if you've ever if you've ever just stopped into one of their uh, Latin American tugs, they have a good time. That's all <laughs> I'm going to tell you. They have a really good time. Love it. Enid, have you been out there? No, I haven't been out there, but I definitely need to attend now that. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. Okay, I'm letting everyone in just so you know, we're going to be live. Yes. <clears throat> We can see you coming. Okay, we can see you coming in. Don't be yes. shy. Come hey, on. Good in. Go ahead, Clough. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening from wherever you call. Yeah. Good morning. This is our third session, and thank you for bearing with us. We had to uh, make some changes. Uh, this session was originally scheduled for Thursday, and uh, we found out that it's a holiday. So we had to move it and we moved it to Monday, which in hindsight probably wasn't the best idea of putting it immediately after TC last week. Keep coming in. I hope everybody enjoyed themselves. I see there's quite a few people out there. We're gonna give it a few more minutes and then we're gonna get started. If, uh, feel, feel, free to, feel free to jump to the chat and uh, just let us know from where you're calling in. Yeah, and also, if you saw something at TC, either virtual or live, that you really like, uh, just just put it in the chat. I, I, we'd love to see what you what you liked out there. Way to go, Oxford, Ohio. I can't keep up with you guys. Many people from the U.S., actually. <laughs> Whoever's out there from Dyer, Indiana, spent a lot of time in Shearville in part of my life. That's just a one-on-one -on -one thing. I, I guess Enid probably knows where that is also. I, I, yeah. just, saw, I, I just saw Bremen from Germany. Uh, congratulations on the, uh, on the Aufstieg in the first, uh, first division. Werder Bremen. Well, I'm happy to see a few, few from India, Mumbai. Yeah. <laughs> Madison, Wisconsin is in the house. Hi, Madison. Love you guys up there. Nashville, Lindsay, you're out there. Good to see you, girl. Hi, Eric. Lindsay's one of the co-hosts of the Nashville Tug. Always glad to have her in the house. Okay, we're going to give it just a couple more minutes. Things are going to slow down a little bit. There's Hammond, Indiana. That's up in that region too, right, Enid? Yep, that's the region. That dull region. <laughs> Enid, you realize there's 98% of the people have no idea what you and I just said, but that's okay. I know. <laughs> I know. There's there's a region like close to Chicago in Indiana that um, we call the region, and it's a series of towns up there. And I was not aware of that. So <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's quite the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Close. So why don't we go to the next slide and they'll, they'll continue coming in. We got a, we're about four minutes after. Okay. Yeah. First, I, I want to do a public service announcement. If any of you were live in Las Vegas last year or last week, and you would all feel sick, ill, you feel like something's not right, please go out and get tested. Um, uh, you may not be following what's going on, but there has been uh, a, a large number of COVID cases that have been identified. And unfortunately, it's mostly uh, what I've seen anyway. There's an awful lot of, a lot of them among the visionaries and the ambassadors. 
So if you were out there and, and you came to a session and you stopped in and you introduced yourself to one of the visionaries and you know, sat down and talked for a little bit and you start feeling bad, by all means, go get tested to make sure you're, you're not you're not positive, but there's there's quite a few positive. And I'll be I'll be straight up with you now. If I met any of you, if any of you came to my session and I met any of you out there, please go get tested. I am not positive at this point. I do not feel good. Uh, I've got two negative tests, but all the people that have been around me have tested tested positive. So I don't expect that to continue. So, you know, when in doubt, go get tested. Okay. Uh, we're recording this, you know that, and we're going to record it and uh, the recording will be out uh, on the uh, hub later. If you have questions, just put them in the Q&A and uh, Viraj, wave, up, wave to everybody, Viraj. Just, just, there you go. <laughs> Viraj is going to answer uh, as many as he can and um, we'll try to get to all the questions that are in there. Please don't put them in the comments or the chat because we just can't keep up with that. It's just uh, it's just too much to try to identify questions out there. But do use a chat to uh, interact with each other and have a good time out there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go. Did you want to say something here, Klaus? Yeah, I just want to welcome everyone. Of course, uh, um, I'm looking really looking forward to to the sessions. We had to do some last minute changes. Um, um, in the agenda as well as in the in the date, but um, we're still quite confident that we've put together an exciting program for you. Um, and all of you will uh, will create uh, things in Tableau today. So please uh, have your uh, Tableau opened, Tableau desktop. Uh, you will have to use it later on today. Okay, well, let's talk a bit about that uh, about, about that agenda. Klaus and I are going to talk about the order of operations. I. And I'm straight up about it. I, I consider the order order of operations fundamentally the most important thing you learn as a as a new user in Tableau. Most of the mistakes that I see, most problems that users have, where they just can't get Tableau to do something, result from being out of order in the order of operations. So we're going to have fun, and we're going to do that. And Klaus and I are uh, uh, are set to go on that. Now we plan to talk about mapping, but our mapping expert is in Seattle down with her entire family uh, with COVID. And we we had a, 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 another visionary, a superstar uh, stud mapping presenter who was going to present out of London. He, he arrived back in London uh, and texted me on Saturday morning and said he tested positive and he wouldn't be able to do it. So Klaus stepped up and said that he'd be able to, he'd be able to fill in. And this is gonna be kind of fun. Uh, we're going to take a look at Sankey diagrams. And I know a lot of you uh, have asked about Sankey diagrams. Some of you don't know what Sankey diagrams are, but by the end of the day, you'll both know what Sankey diagrams are and you'll know how to make one. And, and I they, just saw and, Lindsay, yeah. I, I, just, just a second there. I just saw Lindsay I here in Nashville say, yes, she knows about Sankey's because she and I had a discussion about six months ago with Sankey's and I put her in touch with uh, uh, Ken and it, uh, it worked out well for her. And then we're going to have some uh, we're going to have some fun time with cahoots. Go go ahead, Klaus. Yeah, I just wanted to say about Senke. So they are really um, hard to create, kind of in in Tableau, um, but we will demystify them today a little bit, um, and that will uh, that will be uh, quite easy to do actually. So um, all of you or everyone who wants to will be able to create a Senke um, yourself today, and I'm looking forward to to share that that procedure to do it. Um, so that would be fun. Okay, I, I, I see some questions coming up here in the chat. Don't worry, we're gonna get back to mapping at some point in the future when everybody's healthy again, we're gonna get back to mapping. It's not lost, it's just delayed, okay? Well, let's go on to the next slide. Yeah. Okay. Um, go ahead. So um, yeah, we, um, again, we, we are happy to, to have you here all today. Um, and we, we are the team um, behind the new VTAC. Um, and we maybe, so there are, there will be new people joining for the first time today. So we just wanted to say a few words about ourselves. So I'm, I'm Klaus, I'm a Tableau visionary from, from Germany. I live in the Western part of Germany. So I, I saw some people um, dialing in from Germany. Um, 
yeah, and I, uh, I, um, I, I attended conference, of course. Uh, I attended the virtual one, so I wasn't able to go to the US. And I'm always a big fan of Iron Viz, and that was my, my favorite part of conference. Um, I'm not sure if all of you saw it. If not, uh, try to get the recording. Um, the, the three contestants were just amazing. And I, I think we also saw a deserved winner with Will, um, but everyone uh, did a great job at, at Iron Viz. Yeah, I'm seeing somebody here say Iron Viz was great. I'm Jim, I'm in Nashville. I, I too am a visionary. I had the pleasure of being in Nashville or being in uh, Las Vegas and I, I, I really enjoyed it. It was so good to get back together after two and a half years. If you think Iron Viz is good online, you got to be in the room. It was it was outstanding. We had so much fun, and those guys are so talented. I mean, really, I'm watching this thing live and then going for 20 minutes. And I'd like to say that that was my absolute favorite part. But I made a presentation, so I had a session on teaching Tableau. And if you were in that session, uh, just put a note in the chat. If if you weren't at some time, at some time we're going to have a recording of it. They didn't record it live there. But it's about teaching Tableau, and um, I was really proud of the session. We sold the session out, so thank you if you were there. Uh, really appreciate it. Who wants to oh, go on? Uh, no, Laura, Laura. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, you you used to refer to us as Zen Masters. That name has been changed. Okay. Okay. Go I ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, hi, uh, I am Laura, and I am from Chicago, as you can see in the map, if you are able to. Um, I joined, I'm still a newbie at Tableau. I joined this group because it's helping me out, and I feel like if I have any, some of the same type of questions, I feel like I can help out other people as well. So, yeah, that's how I'm here, and I work as a BI um, analyst at a law firm, but which is quite a niche um, area, but I, I'm using Tableau quite a bit um, right now for my project, so it's been really helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I can go next. So my name is Enid Burchett. I live in Indianapolis. Uh, I work for a higher ed institution. And so I use Tableau a lot for our, our dashboarding and reporting. Um, I didn't attend the conference as much as I wanted to last week. Last week was a little insane for our school, but um, I did watch the keynote and I'm very excited for the new data, uh, the new um, image uh, feature that they have where you can click mm. on a on a bar graph and it takes you to a different um, image. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Maybe Alyssa, Alyssa, are you gonna say anything? Cause I'm gonna say good things about you if you, if you don't. <laughs> sure, yeah, I apologize. My voice is gone. That's just proof that I was in Vegas last week. Um, it was a great time, but uh, I am a community content and event specialist at Tableau. I'm here in the background supporting these wonderful leaders. Um, but yeah, Vegas was a blast. I think my my favorite part of it, it's hard to pick one, but I really enjoyed being a part of the Vizies. It is a community led and run award show, kind of like the Oscars, um, but really, really cool getting to recognize and highlight some amazing members of the community. It's recorded. I'll drop it in the chat if you guys want to um, go check it out. Listen, her typical fashion is being modest, which you don't know in this big fold out uh, business card that she's got with so many, so many titles behind it is they actually, that's the same team that put on two separate conventions last week. They did the live convention and they did the virtual convention, convention, they were two total separate conventions. And no, they didn't have twice as many people to do the job. So thank you, appreciate it. Yeah. Horace, are you gonna jump in here? Oh, seems like he's not able to, to say something. Uh, Viraj, okay. do you wanna go next? Uh, oh, that, that's, Horace just came back. Oh, Horace, uh, yeah. You can go and Horace if you want, if you're ready. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Horace, um, based in I, Nigeria, and I've been building my skills on Tableau for a couple of years now, like a year and a half. Um, 
and that's why I've joined the group. Uh, hopefully, I, I, I hope to improve on my Tableau skills. I've been working on personal projects um, using Tableau for a couple of months as well, and I think I've been improving, and some of these um, events have, all, have helped me greatly as well. Um, I didn't attend the, the conference. I missed it, but I've gone through the videos online, and I think they're quite... Um, um, it's quite important that anyone who's not attended to to have a look. A lot of information there, uh, particularly um, the, the speaker mentioning um, the importance of of embedding um, data culture within organisations. I think is very important um, in in driving um, results using data. So whoever whoever hasn't watched it, to to try and try and watch it online. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Horus. Uh, so I'm Hi Viraj here. I'm from Mumbai, India. And well, the Tableau conference was amazing, you know, as much as people who attended it in person, like Jim, they might be having a blast. We also had some blast virtually. <laughs> we attended some, you know, Remo hangouts where we mm -hmm. could connect people from across the world. And I can see a few of them join this uh, session today. Hi, Prasanna. And um, it was fun. And I think the best part about um, those uh, that event was definitely iron ways that they was on stage you know some wonderful school features and we are just waiting for them to go live and then the speed tips oh come on who cannot who can miss those you know those were amazing mm. uh, both beginners and advanced so that's that's kind of fun and then many customer stories were so so encouraging you know i am definitely going to rewatch it again and again so that's how it is so and welcome everyone to this group Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, and I think we, we we're gonna start with our with our program. Jim, do you want to take it over from here? Sure. Sure. Okay. Today we're going to talk about the order of operations. Whenever I teach Tableau, this is about the second session that I do. It's because I think it is so so important. And as I said before, it's the thing that users and particularly new users get confused about. And we try. We end up making it more difficult than it really is. So let's go to the, ne the next slide. The Tableau order of operations is just like any order, any other order of operations. It's a sequence that Tableau goes through each time you make a worksheet. If you think of your worksheet as two tables, we talk about an underlying table and we talk about the table that you see. The underlying table is a filtered subset of the total data that you've entered into Tableau. And that's the data that's available for you, for you to use on, uh, on the worksheet. You create that table as, uh, as you go through the order of operation. Now the order of operation has 11 steps and there's a number of different models. This is the model that I use. Klaus likes to use a different model. There are a couple of different models, but, that, but that's okay. They're the same 11 steps. I like to break it down like this into three segments. And the reason I break it down into three segments is three segments are easier to understand than 11. Now the first two steps, uh, step one and two are extract filters and data source filters. And those operate at the workbook level. You use those to filter data out of Tableau before it ever gets into Tableau. And therefore your entire workbook works more efficiently. It improves the performance of the workbook. If you're not going to use the data, why have it in the workbook? It's just going to slow things down. All the other steps in the order of operations work at the worksheet level. The next three, and this is the place where probably 80% of users get confused, is using context filters, fixed LOD sets and top end, and the dimension. The dimension filters. Those are that is where the structure for the uh, worksheet data table is created. Think of it like you're creating an Excel spreadsheet and you're taking your headers and you're putting them on rows and columns. That's creating a structure for your worksheet. And that's what's happening in steps three, four, and five, where you use context filters, dimension filters, and add in uh, LODs, sets, and top end. The remaining step, just load that structure with values. You're just putting numbers in the spreadsheet, if you will. And you can think of that spreadsheet uh, like an Excel spreadsheet, it's the visual spreadsheet that you see. We all know 
the underlying table is tall and thin, but think of it as that visual spreadsheet that you see on the, uh, on the biz. And all we're doing is putting values in there. We're gonna do some math at that point, maybe a little more filtering of the measures. We're not changing the structure of the table anymore. We're only looking at the values that are in the table. We do some calculations, and then we do some table calculations. The last thing that's available to us is some calculation filters. Klaus, you want to go to the next one there? Yeah. Um, sure. There we go. This schematically, this is this is kind of what we this is kind of what we talk about. You're bringing data in from whatever source it's coming in from. And, you know, it could be a flat file. It could be it could be off of uh, off of uh, some system data set. And you're going to bring it in, or bring it into Tableau. Well, when you create a individual worksheet, think of that as a Excel flat file sheet that you're going to end up uh, using to create your biz. And that that steps three, four, and five are where you create the structure for that worksheet. Dimensionally, it's it's very similar to the flat file that you would use in Excel. And then you just load it with values and decide what you want your, your end result to look like. Klaus, I think you got some examples that you could show them how this works and, and how it affects you. But bear, bear, I, I guess I should make one other thing. I said 80% of the problems arise in steps three, four, and five where you're working with context filters. The other 20% of the problems typically come when you're working with table calculations. So yeah. with that, I'm gonna throw it over to Klaus to show you some examples. Go ahead, Klaus. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so we, we thought about having a, a an example uh, to to explain what this is all about because this is obviously not about uh, taking taking just one of these um, depending on your uh, what you thought could could match in this case, but it's it's depending on the analytical questions you're you're trying to answer which which of the filters um, or where in the order of operations you you want to do something um, and i've tried to to come up with a simple example uh, that will guide us through the different types of filters um, and will uh, will ask different analytical questions and and i just want to show to you um, yeah what what happens when we take one of these filters or or steps from from the order of operation that that jim has just introduced um yeah and i want to do a really simple example um based on on sample superstore um so the the data set the data set that comes with tableau and we are going to look at category and subcategory so these are the two the the two hierarchy this is part of the hierarchy of the product hierarchy in superstore so each of the products in, in Superstore uh, belongs to a subcategory and each subcategory belongs to a category. So we have furniture with bookcases, chairs, furnishings, and tables. We have, we have of, office supplies and we have technology with the other subcategories. Um, and let's, let's start with a simple analytical question. And uh, your manager could, for example, ask, uh, show me the top 10 subcategories by sale and color code category. And, and this is what we are going to, to build now in a first step. So um, I take the subcategories on rows. Um, I take the sales on, on columns. Um, let me order that. Um, then I want to color code category uh, like that, but I want to use category as an attribute. Uh, let's put subcategory on label. Um, and I want to rank these because I want to show you um, how many we have. Uh, so I've prepared a simple rank calculation. Let me show that to you. So we have just a unique rank of sum of sales. Um, and I bring that in as a discrete pill before subcategory. And like that, you see, we have 17 um, subcategories uh, they belong to uh, technology, to, furni uh, to furni furnitures, and to office supplies. Okay, now the first example. Um, so managers asking, show me top ten subcategories by sales and color code category. Okay, we have the we have done the color coding part, but we only want to see the top ten. Um, there are different ways of uh, of creating the top 10. We could, for example, uh, create a set uh, with the uh, top 10, 
But what I want to do now, and that is uh, this one here, I want to use the top end filter. So whenever you uh, drag a dimension on filters, um, you have different ways of, of using that filter. So if I would just uh, select um, um, members of the subcategory here, um, I would use a dimension filter. Um, we have conditional filters uh, that were these. Uh, what I want to use is the top filter. That is the top end filter. And I'm filtering down my subcategories uh, by sales, sorry. And I want to use the sum of sales and this will only keep the top 10 subcategories by sale. Okay, and you see the, the view gets updated. We only keep 10 subcategories in this and, and this will be my, my starting point for my example. Um, let me hide this one. So I've got like that and we have a nice bar chart. Yeah, so these are, are, are our top, top 10 subcategories by sales and we have a color coded category. Um, now let's move on to the second step. Um, and managers can be like that. Um, and he says, or she says, ah, oh, I forgot, please filter out the furnitures. I mean, I want to see the top 10 without furnitures. Okay, uh, let's try to do that. Um, and what I'm doing now is I put category on filter and I only keep office supplies and technology. And see what happens. Um, we have filtered out furniture, but we only keep seven subcategories because right now I'm using category as a dimension filter. And you see in the order of operations, dimension filters get applied after the top, top end filters. And that's why we only keep seven. So we first filter down to the top 10, top 10 and then I used a dimension filter uh, I filtered out furnitures and we only keep seven because we filtered out three furniture subcategories. So um, what can we do um, to, to fix it? We need to use one of the filters that get applied before the top N filters. Um, so let's drag out category again. And now let's try to use them all. Let's start with a extract filter. Um, I'm already working here with an extract filter, uh, with an extract. So my data source has been extracted. Um, and then we have the extract data option available. And within that extract data dialog, we can add an extract filter. And I will do that on category. Um, and I will exclude furniture. Okay, let's extract that. And you see, we have 10 subcategories. I filtered out furniture before my top N, and now I still have 10 subcategories, but only subcategories from technology and office supplies. That is the first option. Um, second option, let me, uh, let me get rid of this one to get them all back. Let's try data source filter. A data source filters um, are applied on data source level. Um, there are different ways to, um, to do data source filters. Um, I like to do it here from, from the data source, um, right click, and then you have the option to set a data source filter. It looks pretty much the same. Um, let's exclude furniture and we will see the same result. We still have 10 subcategories, but only from technology and office supplies. Oh, the thing that Jim has mentioned is that extract filters and data source filters are applied on workbook level. So let's jump back to my step zero. And you see also in this sheet, we have lost furnitures. So we have office supplies and technology only. Um, Likewise in this one, uh, so it's filtered out for, for the entire workbook. Yeah, so whenever we use that data source sample superstar, we, superstore, we don't have uh, that furniture category when we set a data source filter. Okay, so that is the data source filter. Let's get rid of that again. 
Um, and the last option is uh, now on sheet level, the context filter. Again, let's filter out furniture. I exclude it like that. Um, so this is not what we want right now. It's just a dimension filter. But when you click into that pill, you can add this filter to context. And when you make it a context filter, we get back our 10 subcategories because now uh, we have filtered out um, furniture and do the top N calculation after the context filter. Yeah, so this way we have used a filter um, before we, we did the top, uh, the top 10. Um, and yeah, this is actually what this manager wanted to see. Okay, step three. Um, no, no, uh, keep furniture, but filter down to South region. Okay, so uh, the manager has changed, uh, uh, has changed the, uh, the question again. So um, we, we shall keep furniture, but filter down to South region. Um, okay, let's do that. Um, I put a uh, region on here where I have the um, location. I put region on filter and I select South and do it like that. Okay, so I'm using a dimension filter here and I'm filtered down my, my top 10 subcategories to the South region. Yeah, first the top N, then the dimension filter. Um, sounds like that was the question uh, the manager wanted to uh, be answered. Uh, but now, no, no, I, I meant to say, show me the top 10 subcategories for the South region. Um, and you, you might realize that this, this question is slightly different. Um, so we, we want to see the top, top 10 categories for the South region. That means we have to do that filtering to the Southern region before we do the top N. Yeah? Therefore, again, region on, um, on filter, let's filter it down to, to the south. And then we need to make it, for example, a context filter. And you see the values change. Yeah? When I jump between step three and step four, you, you will see that we get different results. So depending on the analytical question, we have to decide which, uh, which filter we have to use in the order of operation. If we want to filter down the overall top 10 subcategories to south, uh, we use it as a dimension filter, uh, like in this example. And if we want to see the top 10 subcategories for the south, we have to filter down to the south before we do the top end. Jim, is there anything you want to add? At this point, we're here. Uh, we're doing pretty good, but we got a question in here that looked a, a little strange. It says, uh, uh, "What did what did making it an attribute due to the order of, order of operation in the example?" And I can take it, or you can take it. I, either yeah, way, it, it, it has nothing to do uh, with the no. order of operation. Actually, um, yeah. I use it as an attribute uh, yeah. to to not yeah. uh, have any issues with my table calculation. Yeah. So I'm doing a rank here. And I'm doing yeah. the, the rank calculation on subcategories and, and I'm using category as an attribute uh, because then it won't affect the table calculation. Yeah, the, the, the order of operations is immutable. I, I mean, if you've ever done any programming, you know, you start at the top and you work your way to the bottom and that's pretty much the order of operations and changing, changing uh, recasting that value to an attribute is, is not, is not going to change the order of operation. It may change how the values are treated, but it's not going to change the order of operation. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we're almost through and uh, now we have a, a last question. Um, so the question is, uh, that's it now filter down to technology, but keep the overall ranks. Uh, so that's also a, a, uh, a question I came, uh, I came across. And so we have this rank here in the, first, uh, in the first column and the rank, like I just showed, is a table calculation. Um, and what you might want to see is filtering down to, to a category and then keep the ranks. So if I would use um, technology as a dimension filter, you will see that the ranks 
get recalculated. And so we do the dimension filter here and table calculation is step 10, almost at the end um, is, um, is at a later step. So therefore uh, we, we, we won't keep the ranks. We wanted to see uh, when comparing uh, the ranks across categories. So that wouldn't work in this case. Um, so what we needed to do is to use a table calculation filter because uh, we want to calculate the rank first and then filter out the, um, the category. Um, and uh, I like to do that in a, in a calculated field. So we, we, we could do it in different ways. Um, so we could put rank on filter. Um, let's do it like that and calculate it across the subcategories. And then we get the 10 and we could now say, okay, uh, technology is two, four and nine. And like that, we would keep the ranks because we would now have a table calculation filter. So we have rank, which is a table calculation on filter and keep only that. Or we could do it differently. Uh, maybe we want to have that uh, dynamic. Um, so I would create a parameter from, from a category. So I have my three values. And then I would do a calculation, a filter calculation. Um, and I, I use lookup. Um, and I use lookup um, for my category with a offset of zero. And this equals my parameter like that. And if I put that on filter, I want that to be true and show my parameter. And now I could do it for furniture, for office supplies and for technology. Yeah, but the idea is the same, like rank was a table calculation we put, we put on filter. I now use lookup, which is a table calculation on filter. And like that, um, yeah, I, I have applied a table calculation filter and this gets applied after I've calculated the rank in step 10. Yeah, so again, or of operation is very useful. And like Jim said, whenever you think um, something is going wrong and Tableau just does not do what you want it to do, most of the time it has to do with, uh, with the aura of operation and just take this, uh, this little image or the others that are available and, and try to understand what you are doing in your view and which of the filters, which of the calculations get applied um, and in which order they get applied. And then you will find a solution to exactly do what you want or to exactly answer the question that has been asked. Thomas, okay. we've got a great question here and it's a little bit more advanced, but we're gonna go ahead and do it anyway. Uh, Patricia asked, she says, uh, Using sets top end will give you the same uh, the same issues, and uh, I just want to I just want to interject here about using sets and top end and fixed LODs. They all happen in the same step of the order of operations. They're all calculated in step four. Now I'm trying to recall offhand, and, and please go out to my blog. I wrote I wrote a whole blog piece on this on um, on sets and top end. If I recall right, sets are determined for, sets are determined first and LODs are calculated after sets are determined. So you have, and this is a great, great question. This is a little bit of advanced question, but you gotta be very careful when you do this on how to use those two in combination. And I show you a couple of examples either way on how to do it. It's a little bit more than we need to get into this morning, but please go out and look at that. That's an excellent question. Thank you for asking it. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Do we have other, other questions? Barash, do you see uh, yeah, nothing? Yeah, there is, there is this one question. Um, Megan's asked, you know, does the data source filter work if you have custom SQL in your data source? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so the, the, it's, uh, it's, it's, 
there is no no difference which which uh, data source you use or if you do custom SQL, um, it sh it should work. I haven't I haven't tested, but I'm quite confident that it works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it it does work. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It does work. Maybe on, on data source filters, um, there is one thing you you should maybe know. So when when you use this option, wait a second, I'm, I'm using a, a dimension filter here, and there is this apply to worksheet option. And when you say all using this data source, then you are not implementing a data source filter. It's just a dimension filter that gets applied to all um, to all um, yeah to all sheets that use this data source. But it's not a data source filter. Data source filters um, have to be set here, like I just did. There are other ways uh, you can set it here, um, or you could go to the data source page and set the data source filter there. Okay, Klaus, I'm going to interject one thing, and then we probably ought to move on. Very often, we'll get questions out on the uh, on the forum where somebody's created a table calculation, and they say, "I want to take the values on this table calculation. I want to put them over on a summary sheet. And I want to move them to a summary sheet. How do I how do I create a fixed LOD that's going to take those values over?" And I think you can. That's a that's a perfect example of thing trying to do things out of the order of operation. The LODs were calculated way up here before those table calculations were ever done. Now there's ways, oh, you can't see me pointing. I'm sorry. I was pointing, yeah. you couldn't see. Yeah, yeah. And there were the, uh, the LODs are calculated way up in step four. And it's not till you get down into step 10 that the uh, table calculations are calculated. Now there's ways of creating a summary table using table calculations and table calculation filters. And that's a skill that you should learn how to do, but you will not be able to just convert that over to an LOD expression, so. Yeah, so the, the, there are always thousand ways of, of doing a thing, and um, I think the this um, this this order of operation is just fundamental uh, to understand in, in which in which order the the calculations are applied, and uh, that will always help you understand what Tableau is doing. And and don't ever be afraid to ask the question. I'm not going to mention any names. The person is not on the call, but. I get calls from uh, a few people that uh, you know and you'd recognize their name immediately. And they say, what did I do wrong? And it all boils back down to the order of operation that they got something out of order. And you think, well, geez, they're well advanced. They should know that. Well, we all get confused at times. Okay. Very good, Klaus. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Klaus, there's one more question, which, you know, it's quite interesting, which I feel. Uh, it's, it's like, are there any other items we need to be aware of when switching a filter from dimension filter to context filter, uh, will it impact anything else in the workbook? Um, so, um, I'll, I'll jump on it, Klaus. Uh, I guess uh, the short answer, the, the short answer is, and once again, I'm going to point. What it affects is the fixed LODs. Yeah. The, the creation of the fixed LODs, the sets, and the top end. That's everything. That, yeah, everything. And every that place those today. are used. Yeah, every place the results yeah. of those are used will change accordingly. But all you're so, doing is deciding if you're gonna apply the filter before you calculate the fixed LOD or yeah. after. Yeah, so everything that, that happens in step four, and, and that was my step three, step step yeah. four example, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, filtering down to the, the south region when having already calculated the top 10 would be, um, so do the top N in step four and then filter down to south in step five. And this example would be when we use South region as a context filter, first filter down to South region and then do the top end. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Okay. Shall we move on? Move on. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so I am uh, I'm fortunate to take over that next part as well. Like like Jim said, we had some short notice uh, um, cancellations of uh, within our speakers, so um, I'm I'm happy to do this presentation. And 
what I planned for today, and this is quite an experiment, I think uh, we want to create Senke diagrams. Um, and Viraj, I think you have prepared a, a quick poll, and I'm really interested in, in uh, learning to know how many of you have already created a Senke, um, because that yeah. will actually, yeah. So can you start that, that poll? Yes, yes. Yes, I guess everyone is able to see the poll. Oh, I can start seeing the answers already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, so pretty pretty much what what I expected, um, and I will I will tell you in a in a minute why I expected that but we have 94% of, of the attendees that have not created a Senke yet. And there are some people already did it, um, 20 or 19 right now. Okay, good, perfect. Um, so I, I think I have to, I have to change my, um, my, my presentation title to let's say 300. We are not so many people today. Um, but we will do 300 Senkes today. And what I invite you to do is uh, when you have successful, successfully created your Senke um, today, I want you to share it on, on social, uh, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and uh, just, just share with everyone what you've, what you've done today um, at the newbie tag. Okay, good, um, let, let's move on. Um, Virashi, I think you can, you can stop the, um, the poll. Uh, so we have uh, like uh, 300 people uh, that haven't done it yet. So we have 308 people that uh, that take the that took the poll, and uh, we have 94% that never did a Senke. Okay, good. Um, yeah, that that's perfect. Um, so I think now everyone can see the results. Um, so pretty much what I already said. Um, yeah, and then let's let's try to do it. Um, so this talk is basically about uh, using templates um, and, and templates uh, using templates is I think a very good way of, um, of speeding up your Tableau game. Um, so you're probably at your at a very early step of your Tableau journey, but, um, but, uh, but nevertheless, um, I think templates are a good way of, of, of learning also from, from, from people that have created these templates. Um, and just to, to be quicker in, in creating the, the stuff you have to do. Um, and yeah, I've, I've started my, my first slide with, with this image uh, because um, this is what most people that, that use Tableau normally start their projects with. So they, they start with a, with a blank sheet. Um, how can I know? Because I've asked people. So people, um, um, so I, I've asked the Tableau users, um, how do you build in Tableau? And almost two thirds of the people that I've asked, they, they answered, I always start from scratch. Yeah, like, like I just showed with this empty sheet. And then I start building out the visualizations, uh, the, the charts I need to, to have to, or to create to answer my analytic questions. And then I put everything on a dashboard and, and that's it. So two thirds said, always from scratch. Um, then there is a minority, 20, 21% said, I sometimes use templates. Uh, and there is a real minority that say, I use templates a lot. Um, so only 7% say, um, yeah, that is what I, what I often do. Um, there's uh, obviously, and it, it depends option. And some people uh, answered like, uh, I, I start from scratch when I do personal projects for Tableau Public, and I use um, I use templates when I do work-related projects. Um, yeah, and I want to show you today how to do this, how to use templates um, to 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 create complicated charts like a Senke um, or or any other comp, uh, comp complicated chart uh, that you've seen or come across on Tableau Public and you just ask yourself, I want to recreate that. And uh, I want to do that myself with my own data, for example. Yeah, and, and this is what, what we will do. Um, and why Senke diagrams? So Senke diagrams are kind of uh, the, yeah, kind of the most complicated things to do to in, in Tableau. Um, and 
I was a newbie some some time too, um, and I've created this Senkei diagram in 2018. Um, the Olympic Games in Pyongyang were just about to start, and there was a, a initiative on, on social media. Uh, I think it was Makeover Monday, and they shared a data set on um, on uh, on on Olympic uh, medal winners, uh, medalists, and and I thought about this um, this visualization. So I, I wanted to show um, when when did the the most successful um, Olympic winners when did they um, attend the Olympic Games? Um, if that makes sense, and I'm. Today, I'm not even proud of, of this visualization because a, a Senke diagram is, I think, just not a good a, a good, a good choose to do here. Um, so there would be other chart types that, that would be better, I think, to, to show what I wanted to show here. But, but this is not about the, 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 the correct choice of chart type here because I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Senke diagram because it took me ages to create this. So back in 2018, I was still quite new to Tableau um, and I, I found myself a blog post uh, to follow. And I think it was a blog post by, by Chris Love, uh, a Zen master at that time. Um, and I followed each of the steps and I just couldn't get it to work. Um, there are lots of table calculation in, in, this, um, in this blog post explained, but when you don't know how to do this, Table calculations, you, yeah, it, it's just quite, uh, quite difficult to to achieve. Yeah, but eventually I I, I did it, and uh, I still like how this looks. Uh, so this shiny uh, shiny effects, I think that's still quite cool. But I don't I did I don't want to to create a senke in this particular use case again. So please don't judge me on that chart. But um, yeah, I just wanted to share it with you because um, in my my uh, in my memories it was so um, so so difficult to do. And um, yeah, I want to show you today um, a a much easier way. Um, and when you go to Tableau Public, you will find lots of templates. Um, uh, I've, uh, I've uh, implemented the screenshot on the left side, and I think I just searched for for templates on Tableau Public. And you will see lots of templates for um, for Senke diagrams, and most of them have been created by by Ken Flerlach. You probably know Ken. Uh, Jeffrey Schaefer have created lots of um, of, of templates as well, um, and Olivier Caterin has done has done some some uh, some foundational work on on templates as well. So he's he's also often mentioned in when it comes to to Senkes. Yeah, I also already mentioned that blog by Chris Love from the Information Lab. Um, it's also quite quite famous, and there are lots of resources about Senkes available. How do you use normally these templates? So you will you will have to. is a accompanying block um, and then you will read that block um, you will often find excel sh um, sheets or google sheets uh, files that 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 has the data for the senkis in it um, and you can just take these excel files add your own data and then update the the template to use it as you want but Actually, it's not that easy to do. Uh, most of the time things break and then you will start uh, re redoing all the calculations. And, and that's, um, yeah, most of the time it ends in a mess or the, the Excel file is not available anymore. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just difficult to do. Uh, and therefore I want, you, I want to show you today a way um, that will always work when the template is created in a in a certain way. Um, so we will do that from from scratch now. Um, and I already said, please uh, have your Tableau desktop um, in place uh, because you can follow the steps along, and all of you will be able to create a Senki. So we will do um, seven steps. Um, we will download a template from Tableau Public. Um, then we will look into that TWX file, uh, and we will unzip it because a TWX file is actually a zip file. 
Then we will connect to a hyper file that is stored in this TWX file. We will replace data sources. We will fix broken fields because things will break. Uh, that, that, that will always happen, but you don't have to worry about broken fields because it's quite easy to fix them. And then we will connect our own data. We will do it with Superstore. And then we will, do, uh, we will replace some references and that will uh, get our um, Sankey diagram um, ready. Um, one important thing close to my heart. Um, so Tableau Public is an amazing resource. Uh, you, can, you can get lots of uh, workbooks and great visualizations for free. But please, when you take templates and when you use it and when you, sh when you use it with your own data, please uh, always pay attribution to the original source. So like I'm telling you now that this has been created by, by Ken, by Jeffrey and by Olivier. Uh, just be so kind to mention them when you share it on social uh, so they get the credits uh, they they deserve. Okay, and we are going to do um, to do a crazy visualization. So we will create, uh, we will take the multi-level Senke template from Ken and we will create a crazy, um, crazy business uh, infographic. Um, we will create a sales overview. We will compare Superstore sales from one year um, with another year, and we will um, we will compare these um, across different dimensions. We will look at at regions and categories, at segments, and at ship mode. So this is our uh, our goal for today. Um, again, don't judge me on this visualization. I don't even know if it makes sense. This is all about creating a senke, um, and maybe we can have a conversation about what what are useful or what are really useful. Um, uh, or what are useful occasions to, to use a Senke diagram. But at this point, it's, it's basically about how to use templates and, and to, to go to, through that procedure. Okay, good. Then let's, um, let's do it. Um, I want you to, um, to go with me to Tableau Public. Um, so I'm going to Tableau Public. Uh, I started my personal Tableau Public profile. Um, and when when you are on Tableau Public, maybe Viraj, maybe someone can share a link to Tableau Public in the um, in the chat. And you will you will find a search on Tableau Public, and we are going to use this search. Um, and I just write template um, into the search. And when you do that, uh, you will get um, the same view that I had also in my presentation. And then you see all the Senke templates created by Ken. Uh, we see, I think, Jeffrey Schaefer somewhere. Here's Jeffrey. He's done lots of work on, on Senke's as well. Um, and there are some other people also here on the first page. But we can, uh, we can stay here at the very top. And we will use Ken Flerlach multi-level uh, multi Senke template. Um, let's, let's go to that one. And maybe I already share this one in the chat. So th this is a template we are going to use. Um, so just uh, go to that page. Um, and yeah, we, we have here this, this template from Ken where we have um, sources on the left side. And then from that source to that target, we see, for example, how, uh, let, let's assume these were sales, how sales are broken down from, from A to E, F, and G. Or we could go to E and break, break this down to, um, to the further right, to E and L, to I and L, or whatever. Yeah, uh, so this would transform a measure on several steps um, into, into different dimensions and break it down to, to different dimensions. Um, we are going to use this, and we will use it by um, going to that very bottom right here. Um, and oh, it's a German, but you will also have a similar option to download the Tableau workbook. And this is what we are going to do. Um, hit that last option, Tableau workbook, um, and download the current version. And I open that. And then we will have um, Ken's template here available. Like that. 
Yeah. Um, I will unhide the sheets uh, just to give you an impression of uh, why I said it's quite complicated to do such a thing. So we have different sheets here on that dashboard. Um, so these steps, um, um, these, um, these gates are, are always in a sheet. Then we have one sheet for the curves. Then we have another sheet for step two. Then we have again the curves um, and we have again one sheet for step three. And, and like that, there are just lots of sheets on the dashboard. And when you look into that, to look into one of these sheets, you will see how many calculations there are in place to create that view. So Ken has sorted everything perfectly. Uh, and yeah, you, you get an impression of how many calculation it needs to create that, um, that Senke diagram. Um, yeah, so that's the first step. We, we found ourselves a template, we've downloaded the template, and now we wanna use it with our own data and we wanna use it with, with Superstore. To do that, we need to, to do a few, thing, a few things. The first thing is um, I will go to that download um, where I have my downloads. And here we have the first option that is the multi-level Senke template that I've just downloaded. Um, and you see it's a TWX file. When you're on a Windows machine, you can just unzip that, um, that, uh, uh, that file. Uh, if you're on a Mac, the easiest thing to do is to change that extension from TWX to a zip. Yeah, we want to use zip. Okay, I uh, I have that already here in place. I have to rename that a little bit. Wait a second. Like that. Now let me rename it again. Okay, now it's a zip file. And when it's a zip file, I can just double click to extract the data in it. And when you're in that folder, you will see that there is a folder data. Then there is a folder data sources. And there we have the hyper file yeah, that, that has been uploaded together with the workbook on Tableau Public. Uh, this is the TWB file. Um, and yeah, what we are going to do is we, we want to connect to this hyper file to be able to, to use it actually, and to, to, um, to edit that data source. Okay, so th that is a necessary step. And the next thing is we want to connect to that hyper file. So I'm adding a data source and I want to do you to do that as well. Um, so go back to, to the workbook that we've downloaded and opened. And then go to more here in the file section. Yeah, add a data source, then go to more. And then I'm going back to my downloads and there I have my unzipped folder. In this unzipped folder, we have data, we have data source, and I want to connect to that hyper file. Yeah, so again, to, to summarize, you're, we're in the workbook that we've downloaded from public. Now I'm adding a new data source and I'm connecting to that hyper file that is within, um, within this uh, zip folder. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, so that's good. Um, we, we take it as it is and we go back to our sheet um, and we see, okay, we have now two data sources. We have the original Senke and we have that, uh, that data source we, we just connected to. Um, and what we have to do now is we have to replace a data source because we cannot edit the data source that is already in the workbook, uh, but we can edit the data source we, we just connected to. And what we have to do is we will replace data sources. Um, that's a feature you find in the in the data menu. Um, so go to data and then replace data sources. And we want to use the visualizations in this workbook, not with the Senke, uh, with the one with the data source that gets shipped with the with the workbook, but with this hyper file we just connected to. So we go to replace data source, 
And we want to replace the current one, the Senke, with our Excel Direct 42458 extract, yeah, which is basically the same, but when we connect to that one, we are able or we will be able to, um, to edit that data source. Okay, let's do it. And this will this will take a second uh, because uh, now there the the data gets changed in the background. Um, and let's see what happens. Okay, and now we see there there broke things. Um, we are now connected to this one. We see the blue little check mark, but we have some some red pills, and red pills are always a a sign that something broke. Um, but no worries, uh, it's really not that bad and we can easily fix it. Um, and things broke because for some reason there are two fields that are named differently. And when we change, uh, replace that data source, um, Tableau couldn't find the field it was looking for. And we can fix this by, by looking into the data pane and searching for data source fields. Yeah, uh, so these are all calculations, calculations, calculations. And at the very bottom, there are two data source fields. So this is path and this is a T. And these have a, have a red exclamation mark. That means um, these two fields couldn't, couldn't be found in the new data source. And what we have to do is we have to replace um, the references to the correct field. Yeah, so right click this field and search for the correct path field. And you see there is a field path without the um, extension in brackets model. Um, and this is the, 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 the field we need, to, we need to use. Yeah, um, I showed again, right click on path replace references, and then select the correct field, which is just named path, like that. And the same has to be done for T model, replace references and choose T without the extension uh, model instead. Yeah, when we do that replacement, then you see the, the view is fixed. We, we don't see any red pills anymore. And we are now in full control over this data source. We can, we can even close the original one from CAN. Um, and we are now um, yeah, in, in, the, in the data source that was shipped with the workbook. Um, and we are now able to edit that data source. Okay, so these were already a couple of steps. Um, we've downloaded the workbook. Um, we've connected or we've unzipped uh, the TWX file. Um, we've added a data source, uh, which is the extract file that was in the TWX, uh, the hyper file that was in the TWX. And then we've connected to that, to that source, to that file. We've replaced the data source. Um, and then we fixed uh, this, uh, yeah, the red pills by replacing references to the correct fields. Yeah, um, our Senke is still working. Let, let's go to the, to the dashboard. So everything is still in place. Uh, but what we can now do is we can now go to that data source page and we can add a connection to the data we, we want to map actually, or we want to visualize with, with that Senke diagram. Um, what we are going to do is to add a connection. Um, and uh, I want you to use the, the sample superstore. Um, and therefore, please connect to an Excel file. So add a connection to an Excel file. And the, the superstore data set sits within the documents. And within the doc documents, you will find a Tableau repository. And within the Tableau repository, there should be a sample superstore Excel file somewhere. Yeah, so it's in the documents, then my Tableau repository. And within the 
Tableau repository, there is a folder data sources. Um, you could also take this one from, from the latest version. Um, I'm now connecting to that one from 2021.4. Um, yeah, and just open that file and this will add a new connection to, um, to the workbook. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, and then you see we have a second uh, a second connection. Uh, this is the hyper file. This is the Excel file. Um, and I want to use that orders table from, from the sample superstore. I would just double click that orders table. Um, and this will create a relationship with the extract. Um, and this is now the step to connect the template with your own data. Um, and we have to, um, to define that relationship between the two. Um, and to do that, we will create a relationship calculation. So um, we have to define a field on, in both tables um, to, yeah, to define that relationship. And there is actually no field in the data that, that, will, that, that, that can be used for the relationship. And therefore I'm creating a relationship calculation by just typing in one on the left side. And I do exactly the same on the right side, also type in one. Yeah, this, this will create a kind of a Cartesian product between the two, but since we're using the relationship model, uh, we don't have to worry too much about data duplication. So everything should, should be fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, so. The steps are add a connection to the data you want to map, and then bring in that table with a double click or by drag and drop, and then define the relationship calculation on both sides where you say one equals one. And when I now go back to my curve one, you will see that we have the superstore data available now. So we have category, we have city, we have subcategory. So the fields we, we also used in the, in the previous example. Now, so we, we've connected the template uh, data with our um, own order state um, data. And now we are almost there. Um, the next thing we have to do now is again, replacing references. Um, you see um, in, in this folder from Ken um, or in this data from Ken, he has nicely labeled the, the, the fields um, and, and this will give you an idea of how they are used. So we have step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. When we look into the dashboard, uh, these are the, the four steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. Um, so we want to use now different fields instead of the step one, step two, step three, step four uh, and five um, fields. And to do that, we will replace references again. Um, so I'm starting with step one. And instead of step one, I replace references um, to the country. Um, I want to um, start my Senke diagram with a country variable. Yeah. Again, right click on step one and select country and region. So and you see the view already updates. Um, in step two, I want to uh, I want to use region. So I want to break down the countrywide sales to region. So instead of step two, I'm replacing references to region. Yeah, and you, you see the view has already uh, updated. Um, and then uh, let's, let's take for step three, four and five other fields from Superstore. Um, for example, on step three, I want to use category, On step four, I want to use segment. Yeah, so this is just random. I'm, I'm taking uh, some of the fields that are available. And for the fifth step, I want to use ship mode. 
Yeah, so now we've already replaced the, the five steps with five dimensions from the superstore. And the last thing we have to do, we have to replace the measure. So when looking at Kent's data, we see there is one variable size. Um, and I don't want to use size here um, because it's just uh, meaningless in, in this context when I look at Superstore, but I want to use the sales instead. Okay, let's take, let's replace the reference to sales and the view will update. And we're done. We have created our Senke diagram without uh, looking into one single calculation. And when you now jump back to the dashboard, you will see the magic happen. The, the query gets executed and we have created our Senke diagram and broken down sales uh, from, from the entire United States to regions, from regions to categories, from categories to segments, and from, from segments to ship mode. Yeah, and like that, you can very easily uh, yeah, use templates available on Tableau Public and yeah, really own it and, and use it with your, with your own data. Okay, good. Uh, I, I know these were a couple of steps. I'm not sure if, if some of you are, I hope a lot of you were able to follow. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good way of, um, um, of saving lots of time. It's a really time saver. Um, and yeah, like I said in the beginning, this is maybe kind of demystifying uh, a Senke diagram. Um, obviously it, it absolutely makes sense to, to understand what's going on in the workbook, but sometimes you, you just want to use a, a certain visualization and, and this is a easy way to do that. Um, if you want to dig deeper, I recommend using the blocks uh, that are available and yeah, just to understand what's going on in the workbook. Okay, I'm, I'm sure there are lots of, lots of questions. And um, most of all, I'm excited to hear, did someone, was someone able to, to do a, uh, a Senke diagram? Well, before they answer this, you know, there's one question for you, Klaus, maybe, you know, just uh, maybe a generic question, you know, what is a good use case for this Sankey diagram? Where would it be, you know, probably used? Yeah, um, so what would be a good use case? I think a good use case would, for example, be to follow the way of qualifying leads. Um, um, for example, you have some, some leads, leads first and then um, you you have a, a a call with them so they get qualified and from a qualified lead you you uh, you, you send out uh, proposals to some some um, some of these and some become a customer um, eventually um, or same with uh, with people uh, that um, yeah that applied for a job so you have some uh, so you have first all of them that applied and then some some can be uh, taken for formal reasons, um, and then you you talk to some, and you have a second interview with with more of them, um, and you hire uh, only a few. So whenever you have different steps of um, of looking at a, uh, a a data, and you you qualify over this process, uh, then a Senke diagram could be a a useful um, useful visualization, a flow diagram basically. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And uh, could you uh, maybe you know there were a lot of questions or confusion around how did you you know extract the data of after you downloaded uh, the TWBX file? So probably just a recap of that would help. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me go a few steps back. So after you've downloaded that that workbook, it looks like this. So you have a TWX file. Um, and when you look at a TWX file uh, and you're on a Windows machine, you should just be able to right click and to unzip that file. Um, you cannot do that when you're on a, um, on a, um, on a Windows, uh, on, a, um, on a Mac, uh, for example, then just rename that extension from TWX to zip. Um, and then you can just 
also double click and, and extract that, that file. And then when you look into that folder, um, you have uh, the TWB file and the data that is used in this uh, TWB file to create the visualization. Um, and that was this Excel direct 42458 uh, hyper file. So whenever you download a, a workbook from Tableau Public, you can look into that TWX file and you will find a data source in that. Great, thank you, thank you very much. Okay. That was great. Uh, you know, somebody wants to win something here. So I think we got a quiz coming up. Are we, are, yep. we, are, we ready, are we ready with the quiz, Enid? Yep, we're ready. So give me a second. Yeah. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, so um, everybody that wants to participate, um, join us at www.cahoots.it. And then it's gonna ask you for a pin. And just by the way, I think our first place finisher will get a year's license to the e-learning platform. So it's a pretty nice little prize. Wow, now they start coming out. You said the e-learning platform, yeah, I'm with you. And if you're using a phone, smartphone, you can just uh, scan the QR code as well. <laughs> I like that name, Monday is one, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see all the people here. Thank you, thanks everyone. We have a lot of participants. Yeah. Wow. I don't know if you can see the um, username TC22, but just pass by. Seven H nine. Some interesting names here coming up. You can see. Can I give it a few more seconds? Help. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. I also like the one that just says, "Just do it." Okay, that was short, just K. <laughs> just K. Okay, I think we... Yeah, I think we can probably get started, right? The region. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get started. Okay. So remember, this is like, like a time quiz. You're gonna get a options and then whoever gets it first. So the first question, how many layers are in the Tableau order operations, which was uh, Jim's and Kaos's first presentation. Yay. Mm -hmm. We've got about uh, 37 people that we have to talk to, Klaus. Did you get all the <laughs> names and addresses so that we can visit them later? And then um, Hawk killed it, did it super fast. And then here's just an, a refresher of what we talked about in the slide. Okay, question number two. So the show me on, on Tableau, how many templates are out there? Oh, this is interesting. That's a nice question. I don't know if I, if I even know. 
I can do it for a while, but Ooh, it's yeah. a tough one. Yeah. So there's 24 out yeah. there. So and and we now we know we can also go out and um, download from Tableau Public, but 24 come with the Tableau software. Oh. Oh, oh. that's a lot change. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Emma is the highest climber, 62 places. Nice. Nice. All right. Question number three. So which chart type is the best to visualize data over time? Oh, this is my favorite one. <laughs> one of my favorites, I would say. Absolutely. Three, two, one. Let's go. Yay. Yay. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, Yasi. Oh, Yasi. Oh, the first place. And then we have 30, uh, 23 players who have a answer streak. Oh, wow. Wonderful. This one, I kind of gave it to you guys. <laughs> Interesting. Pan and Zoom is I don't think I know the answer, guys. I don't think I know the answer. <laughs> it's very complicated. Yes. Oh, I'm just looking at right now if I can get it correct. <laughs> no, same. Yay, that's nice. That's great. Oh, Yasi, oh, at AP. And then I just wanted to add this. So in the map, I don't know if you guys knew, but you can add layers. And there's a um, there's data from the census on the Tableau um, software that you can just layer on your maps. Nice tip. Useful tip. Okay, now which is not a join in Tableau? It's a trick question, which is not a join? It is a trick question. Hmm. Good, good. Good. So one zero eight have gone and correct. Fifteen people. And then we just have a poll. Will you be joining us next time? <laughs> <laughs> this has to be hundred percent. Please, this has to be hundred <laughs> percent. Oh. Yeah, oh. <laughs> oh, so the one person I can understand, he may have some other plans, but yeah, <laughs> we would love to see you on the 29th. Yeah. And then okay, no, we the podium. Okay, third is AP. Yossi. Second is Yossi, and the first rank goes to. Oh, oh very nice. Nice. Hey, uh, Tom T, would you just direct message uh, Enid a way to contact you so we know how to send you your uh, gift certificate? Either that I or believe I, I should have his email as well too. You you already got him? Okay. Um, I think it asks for email when it when they log in. Oh, okay. if, if you've got it, then we're in good shape. We're in good shape. Oh well, yeah, thank you guys. That was fun. We've got about two minutes left, Klaus. You're muted there. Yeah, we are perfectly in time. Um, so uh, I think last thing uh, for us to share is our next event. And the next event will take place on June 29th. Um, so um, we're back on a Thursday, I think. Uh, I believe that is a Thursday. Yeah. I that um, is a so, Thursday. Um, we 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 invite you to subscribe to our um, to our to our splash site, and then you will get a link uh, to register. Um, yeah. I think we've shared it probably in the chat already. 
Uh, no, I think I uh, still have to make the link. Sorry about that, guys. But yeah. Uh, okay. uh, Alyssa, uh, Enid, Alyssa dropped it in the chat right at the beginning. If you want to run up there and grab it real quick. Okay, let me uh, type it. She, she created the... Uh, oh, the I have just sent it. Yeah, I've just sent it. Oh, okay. thank you. Okay. Now, one additional thing. Uh, we had to make changes in the agenda today. If you have a particular issue that you want us to address at some point in the future, you want us to take a look at, just drop it in the chat and we'll see when, when we can get to it, okay? Thank you. Until then, bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.